All right, here we go. Our last example of how to find an x value if we've been given a probability. So we're working with the same information we have been. We have female heights that are normally distributed. They have a mean of 65 inches and a standard deviation of 3.5 inches. So now 95% of women are between what two heights? So 95% of women are between what two heights? So our answer is actually going to be two different heights. We're looking for between and our probability is 95%. Whenever you're working on one of these problems, at least within the scope of this course, you can always assume that if you're given a probability and it is the probability between two values, that that is the middle probability. It's not shifted anywhere on the curve. It's the middle 95%. So we're going to follow the same steps we were before. So we're going to start by drawing our curve. I'm drawing it nice and big. I'm going to label that middle. And then we're going to shade. I'm going to shade in a different color. Okay, so we have between, which means the middle. And we want the middle 95%. So I'm going to shade 95% of my curve and I'm going to start in the middle. Now, remember with a bell shaped curve like this, one of the ways that we can describe this is that it is symmetric, meaning it's even on both sides. So if I'm shading 95% of my curve and it's in the middle, I'm going to shade the same amount below the curve as I do above the curve. So I'm gonna start shading, 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 shading. Like I said, if you wanna take your time and do this, you could do this as a little bit of a color therapy. Okay, or if you're sitting at home super bored right now, you could do this as some color therapy. So I'm shading 95% of my curve, which is gonna be almost all of it. It's gonna be a lot of it. Okay, I'm gonna make this bigger for a second. Oh, there we go. Okay, boom, 95%. Ah, I will redraw, no, we're just gonna undo that. Oh no, I did that all in one motion. Okay. 95% of my curve, it's pretty even on both sides of the mean, which I will relabel. Boom, there he is. Okay, where I stop shading, right here and right here, I have two unknown Z scores. I have ZA and I have ZB. Okay, ZA is the negative Z score, ZB is a positive Z score. So now step three would be to go find these Z scores using Excel. So to find ZA, I would do norm dot S dot inverse. And then remember, we need to plug in the area to the left of the Z score we're trying to find, which in this case is this area. And I don't know what that area is. There are a couple of ways that I could find this area. Okay. First, if I look at the fact that I've shaded 95% of my curve in red, that means I have 5% of my curve unshaded, or now that 5% is what I've shaded in blue. Okay, so the middle 95% is in red, which means I have 5% on either side in blue. It's symmetric, which means because it's the middle 95%, it means these two blue regions are the same. So this blue region has an area of 2.5%. Same with this guy, 2.5%. 
Alternatively, you could say, okay, if I cut it in half and only look at this bottom half, how much did I shade in red? What is remaining to get me to the 50% that is below the mean? It gets you to 2.5% the same way. Okay, so now I have 2.5%, 95%, and 2.5%. All of those added together gives me one, which is the total area underneath the curve. Okay, so let me just make a little note here because I talked about it, but if I do one minus 0.95, that gives me 0.05, and then I divided that by two to get the 2.5%. So now in norm.s.inverse, I'm going to plug in 0 0.025, which is 2.5% as a decimal. So I get, when I do that, wah, I don't know why it's doing the whole, there we go. Okay, equals norm dot s dot inverse 0 0.025 okay so now when I look at this one I have negative 1.95996 if I round that to 4 I look at the 6 which would round the 9 up which turns it into a 10 so you carry the 1 which turns the second 9 into a 10 so you carry the one again, so you get negative 1.96. So this z-score is negative 1.96. So that is z-a. For z-b, we're going to go to norm.s.inverse. And now we need the area less than ZB, all of the area less than ZB. So ZB has the middle 95% less than it, but it also has this 2.5% that was less than ZA, which gives us 0 0.975 or 97.5%. Okay, when you do that, and I'm not gonna do it, but when you plug this into Excel, you are going to get positive 1.96. And the reason for that is, this is a symmetric distribution. And we have the same amount shaded below the mean as we do above the mean. We have the same percentages in these blue sections that are less than ZA and more than ZB. Because of that fact, ZA and ZB are going to be the same value. Only one will be positive and one will be negative. This will always be true when you have the middle something percentage shaded on your curve. Okay, so for ZB, I don't even really need to go find it using Excel. I can just say, well, I know ZA is negative 1.96, my distribution is symmetric because it's normal. I'm looking at the middle 95%. So my z-score for zb is going to be positive 1.96. Okay. So now we have our two z-scores. Oh, I had the right color. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for each of these x values. And I'm going to call them xa and XB just to stay consistent. So XA is going to be found using the ZA Z score. So negative 1.96 times 3.5 plus 65. Your answer will not be negative. It's going to be less than 65, but it is not going to be a negative. You cannot be negative inches tall. So I got 58.14. And then if I do it again using ZB, positive 1.96 
times 3.5 plus 65, I get 71.86 inches. So 95% of women are between 58.14 inches and 71.86 inches tall. And that is how you find the probability, or I'm sorry, that is how you find the X values when, you, when you're given the middle probability or the probability in between the two values. And that is it.